worship. I am so excited to be here with you today. Let's learn about God together. Before we get started, let's say our kids' confession and our kids' creed. Our confession is a prayer that we say telling God that we are sorry for our sins. Let's say our confession together. Heavenly Father, we have thought, we have said, we have done things that are not right. Help us to be truly sorry and forgive us for Jesus' sake. Amen. Our creed is a prayer that we say telling God that we believe in him and everything he says in the Bible. Let's say our creed together. I believe in God above. I believe in Jesus' love. I believe in the Spirit too, who comes to teach us what to do. I believe that I can be kind and loving, Lord, like thee. Amen. Hey friends, it is so good to be back here again for another week of kids worship. You know, someone reminded me that we have not been able to celebrate birthdays while we have all been at home having virtual kids worship. So, I want to celebrate all of your birthdays that we've had since March. So let's say happy birthday to our March birthdays, Jack, Barrett, Isla, Luke, Wyatt, and Grayson. From April, happy birthday to Tripp, Wyatt, Liam, Addison, Hannah, Rebecca, Violet, and Sassy. Happy birthday to our May birthdays, Ross, Peter, Isaac, Mary, Grant, Charlotte, Annabelle, William, John, Lily, Catalea, Eleanor, Trevor, Elsa, and Brooke. And this month, happy birthday to Kate, Hayden, Caroline, Adeline, Gage, and Thomas. Wow, that is so many birthdays. Can you all say a big happy birthday to all of our friends? Let's say happy birthday on three. One, two, Three, happy birthday! We hope you have had the best birthdays and we will do this again next month for our July birthdays. Now, check out this challenge Andrew and I did to get ready for today's story. Hey! Hi. Welcome to our blindfold challenge. We are going to do a couple of easy activities like brushing our teeth, drawing a picture, making a sandwich, but we are going to be blindfolded. Uh, so, have fun watching. And kids, don't try this at home unless there's an adult there to make sure you stay safe.
of God's big story, someone will become blind for three days. And when he gets his eyesight back, everything in his life changes because he experienced God's love. We are going to be talking a lot about God's love today. So I have a craft for you to make to use during the story. You will need a pair of scissors and a sheet of paper. What you'll do is fold your paper in half, hamburger style, and then you or someone who can use scissors will cut out a heart like this. Now go make yourself a heart. Okay, does everyone have their hearts? Good. Every time I say the word love in today's story, I want you to hold your hearts up high so that way everyone can see it. Like this. Let's practice. God is love. Good job. We actually just said our ponder point for the day. God is love. Can you say it with me? God is love. Today's story comes from the book of Acts chapter 9. After Jesus' disciples were filled up with the Holy Spirit, they continued to serve God and to share the good news about Jesus throughout all the land. Many people decided to trust in Jesus and follow him. There were lots of people who were really, really happy about the things the disciples were teaching about Jesus. Can you show me your biggest smile and your happiest face? Good job. That's how a lot of people felt when they learned that God loved them. But there were also a lot of people who were not happy about what the disciples were teaching about Jesus. Can you show me your most unhappy, angry face? There was one man who was very well known for being unhappy with what the disciples were teaching about Jesus. His name was Saul. He wanted to stop the disciples from talking about Jesus. So Saul was having Christians put in jail and killed just for talking about Jesus. You see, Saul did not believe that Jesus was the son of God. Saul knew a lot about God and his laws in his head, but he did not know or understand God's love in his heart. God has the biggest heart of all because God is love. God loves everyone so much, even the people who go against him. God loved Saul so much, even though Saul did not feel the same way. God wanted Saul to know him, not just in his head, but in his heart too. So one day, Saul was walking down the road with his friends to a town called Damascus, when all of a sudden there was a flash of light all around Saul. Saul covered his eyes and fell to the ground. And then he heard a voice speak to him. The voice said, Saul, Saul, why are you fighting against me? Saul asked, who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, the voice replied. I am the one who you are opposing and trying to stop. Now get up, go into the city, and I will tell you what to do next. The men traveling with Saul had heard the voice too, but they didn't see anyone else on the road. When Saul got up from the ground, he opened his eyes, but he couldn't see anything. 
He was now blind. So his friends had to take him by the hands and lead him to Damascus. Saul was blind for three days. While Saul was blind and waiting, Jesus appeared to a man named Ananias in a vision. Jesus said, go find Saul and pray for him. How do you think Ananias, a Christian, felt about going to pray for Saul, a man who had been putting Christians in jail? I think Ananias was probably pretty scared, right? Ananias said to Jesus, Lord, I have heard about this man and of all of the evil things he has done to your followers. But Jesus said, I have chosen to use Saul to tell the world who I am. Wow! Jesus chose to love Saul and chose to use him as part of his story, even when Saul did not love Jesus. So Ananias obeyed Jesus and went to find Saul. When he found him, he said, Brother Saul, it was Jesus who appeared to you on the road, and he will give you your sight back and fill you with the Holy Spirit. And you know what happened? Ananias prayed for Saul, and immediately Saul could see again. Then Saul was baptized and was filled up with the Holy Spirit and with God's love. Saul now knew that God loved him. When Saul accepted God's love and said yes to Jesus, everything in his life changed. Saul decided to follow Jesus every day for the rest of his life. He was no longer unhappy about what Christians were saying about Jesus because now he believed it too. In fact, Saul began to teach people about Jesus. He also got a new name, Paul. Paul traveled all over, serving God and telling people that Jesus really was the Son of God. Paul now knew God in his heart. And God's love changed everything for Paul. And Paul spent his entire life telling people that God is love. Do you want to know some fun facts about Paul? Did you know Paul was shipwrecked three times while he was traveling to tell people about Jesus? Did you know Paul ended up in prison for telling people about Jesus? Did you know Paul wrote 13 books of the Bible? Wow, Paul loved God so much. But remember, God loved Paul first. Even when Paul was still Saul and was having Christians killed and put in jail for believing in Jesus. Do you think it was hard for God to love Paul when he was doing all of those horrible things to Christians? No way! Remember, God is love. That means everything about who God is and what he does is all about love. For us, it's easy to love people who love us back, right? It's easy to love people who are kind to us and do good things for us and other people. But sometimes it's hard to love people who don't love us back. It's hard to love people who are mean to us or do mean things to other people, right? But you know what? We serve a God who is love. And since we are filled up with his Holy Spirit, that means we are filled up with God's love too. So next time it's hard to show someone love, you can stop and pray and say to God, God, help me to love like you do because you are love. Actually, our memory verse this week can help us to remember that. It says, dear 
friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. 1 John 4, 11. Do you think you can say it with me? Let's try together. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. 1 John 4, 11. Good job. Now, I want you to take your heart that you made at the beginning of the story, and I want you to write down or draw pictures of ways that you can show God's love to other people. And you can use it to help remind you how much God loves you and how much he wants you to love other people. Remember, God is love. I hope you have a great week and we will see you next time. Bye.